This is GRE Bytes. My name is Davis. I'm an educator with over 10 years of experience. And I'm Orion, the founder of Stellar GRE. We're here once again to bring you your weekly bite-sized episode on GRE prep and grad school admissions. Please check out our top-rated GRE self-study program at StellarGRE.com and use the code BITES for 10% off all memberships. All right, let's get to the topic of the day. We know that, you know, obviously to prep for the GRE, you got to you got to study the material. You got to run through actual practice problems. Uh, maybe even you know taking uh, whole sections, quant or verbal sections at a time, practicing on the essay. Well, I want to ask you, Orion, specifically. You know, at what point in your study process, and how many over the course of you know eight eight to eight weeks or so, how many times do you want to engage in taking the full you know four hour test? That is an excellent question, and it's something that is very important for all students to do. The GRE in its current form is an endurance test. It takes about four hours to complete. If students are just doing one-off questions, if they're grinding through thousands of disconnected problems using some of my competitors' resources, they get a very disjointed um, experience with the test. It's not enough to just be able to solve a problem. Obviously, each problem is a little puzzle. It's very satisfying to be able to solve it. But you, if you can't solve that problem 90 seconds or less, you kind of can't solve it. And if you can't solve that problem in 90 seconds or less, 100 of them in a row, you're actually not really preparing for the test that you're going to be forced to take, whether you like it or not. So it is very important to gradually move in the direction of sitting for full-length mock tests as your prep progresses. So it's a good idea, we do this in the Stellar product as well, to start with reinforcing specific strategies and techniques by rehearsing specific types of problems. There's a time and a place for that. And then to move into full problem sets, i.e. completing 20 quant or verbal problems within the indicated time limit and then stringing those sets together into longer and longer sequences, finally culminating in the full-length test with the two essays and the five sections. So far, so good? Yeah, that makes sense. So you said there's a, there's a certain time for each of these different modes of study, and you know, so at what point? It's only after you've kind of gotten only after you've gotten a single quant section or a single verbal section, all 20 questions within the time frame, then do you want to embark or? Yeah, you want to do it later on in your prep. And there's a couple of good reasons for this. Practically speaking, unfortunately, there's not a lot of good full length practice tests available. You can download two for free at ets.org backslash GRE, they're called the power prep tests. Those are obviously the gold standard because they're created by the publishers of the test. They're adaptive and the sections are curated by question, like they're very intentionally constructed. We do that at Stellar as well, where each, you have an adaptive test and each section is curated. I put the questions in each section intentionally to create certain difficulty levels, etc. A lot of my competitors don't do that. What they do is you can take a mock-like experience where they just randomly populate these sections with tests, with questions more or less of a certain difficulty level. It mostly works, but it isn't exactly the same experience. So we want to save the full-length practice test for later on in the prep because if we use the good stuff too early, um, we kind of lose the validity of that experience too early. So we have five through Stellar and two through the Power Prep. So that's seven, and that's probably more than enough for students to do. Um, the other good reason why you should do it later on in the prep is you kind of, it's important not to reinforce the wrong thing. You cannot do something over and over again and get worse at it. So if you're doing these full-length tests at the beginning, before, say, you've learned about skipping or you've learned about diagnosing or you've learned certain time efficient techniques. What you're going to be doing is reinforcing on a high level maladaptive approaches to the test. What we want is for students to reinforce and rehearse what they should be doing on the test before they actually take the test. And that generally means you have to spend some time learning what you should do on the test first. That makes sense, right? 
No, that makes that makes total sense. Not uh, not you know drilling in or solidifying uh, bad habits or bad practices. That makes sense. I do want to ask though: Is there any place, for example, I'm remembering taking something like a practice test right at the beginning of my GRE, you know, study with you and to get a baseline and then going into this specialized, you know, study of each thing's learning all the different strategies. And then later, as you're explaining, going back and then that's, you know, that can be grounds for great confidence building for the student. That's a good point, Davis. It's really important to collect a baseline on your current abilities before you even start your test prep journey. Best case scenario, you're already scoring at or around where you need to with respect to your target schools, and you can bypass the test prep ordeal entirely. That would be great. That would It would be very frustrating to learn that you put in two or three months of effort unnecessarily. That's fairly rare, to be honest, but it is a case that's worth exploring. So it's a good idea to collect a baseline. You don't necessarily have to do that with a full length mock test. I think you can get a pretty decent idea of your baseline by completing a single pro problem quant set and a single problem verbal set. Um, just do 20 problems of each within the relevant time limits and that should give you a pretty decent uh, snapshot into your current ability. I don't think there's a, a dire necessity to take a full length test when you first start out. No, that's great. And that's what I remember is just one section of each to get that to get that baseline, but within the appropriate time frame. Uh, and so, you know, you said seven tests total, that's probably more than enough for a given person. Oh, yeah. So, you know, when you say take it later, let's say, you know, just project it out, you got eight weeks, you take your baseline, you start week one, maybe like week by week four, you've gotten some of these strategies, you've gotten individual sections down to within time, you know, and then how close to week eight? I mean, are you, is that the last thing you're doing before you take the real test is taking a, a full length? Well, you definitely don't want to take the full length test the night before you take the real test. That's not a great idea. In the three month study plan that I have delineated in the Stellar program, as I mentioned, there are five full-length mock exams, and they come in around week eight. I think that you do one a week until the final week when there's not a lot of new material, and it's just about consolidation of your system at that point, and then there's two. But uh, you definitely want to practice for that sustained endurance and concentration that's necessary for a top percentile score. No, great. And just a, just a clarification, I've been using eight weeks as a as a framework, a two month thing, but, but you're right. So, so in that case, if, if someone was doing it in eight weeks, it would come in around week six, but in a, in a three month and a 12 week course, you're saying, yeah, around two thirds of the way through something like that. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's great. Thank you for that question, uh, and response. Um, and thanks everybody else for tuning in. We'll be back next week for another bite sized episode of GRE Bytes. If you have a topic you'd like to discuss, please let us know. Shoot us an email at stellargre at gmail.com. And if you're ready to take your prep to the next level, always remember you can check out our top rated GRE self study program at stellargre.com and use the code BITES, capital B I T E S, for 10% off all in any memberships. All right, guys, see you soon. Bye bye.